In this example, we have a rational inequality, uh, which is also nonlinear. It's a form of nonlinear inequality. Well, here we have x plus 1 over x minus 4 less than or equal to 0. And again, so now we have, we have a denominator in the, or we have an x in the denominator along with an inequality. Those two things together signify a little bit of work, actually quite a bit of work needs to be done to solve these problems. But first, let me just bring up a graph of what a rational function looks like. It's not this rational function, it's just an arbitrary rational function, but I want to say some things about it before we move on. What I want to point out is that this rational function can switch from being above the x-axis, so this is the x-axis here. Um, look, here it's above the x-axis, right? And then at an asymptote, asymptote is this vertical line, meaning it's, it's undefined here, and then it's below the x-axis, and then we have a root or a zero, a zero of the rational function, and then it's above the x-axis again, we hit another root and we're below it again, and then we hit an asymptote and we're back above it again. So the point of me showing you this is that we must um, test regions defined by asymptotes and by zeros, right? So this, this particular example would have one, this region, two, three, four, five. Five different regions to check. Okay, now this graph does not go with this rational function, but I just wanted to show you why we, we check the different regions um, defined by zeros in the denominator. So asymptotes come from zeros in the denominator, in denominator, and where it actually crosses the x-axis, these will be from zeros in the numerator. Okay, so okay, so let's return to the original. We have x plus 1 over x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. Let's bring up the steps to solve this kind of problem. Okay, step one, make sure zero is on one side of the inequality. Well, there we have it, zero is on the right side by itself, so that's good to go. If it's a rational equation, combine over a single LCD, or single denominator. Well, here we have a single denominator, so that's good to go. Um, it's a little more work if, if you have different things going on. Um, solve the related equation. Okay, by this we mean set both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. Right, that's going to account for both where the function crosses the x-axis and where it has an asymptote. So let's do that. Step three here. So we take x plus one equals zero. That gives us x equals minus one. That's our x-intercept. Okay, we also have x minus four equals zero, which gives us x equals four. That's our asymptote. Okay, so there's that. Next, we need to separate the number line into regions and select some test points. Okay, so here we go. Here's zero just as a, as a uh, kind of a marker of where we stand. Negative one and four, something like that. Okay, then we pick our test points. Same thing as just the, uh, the polynomial case. We do test points here, so we'll do x equals negative two x equals 0, and say x equals 5. Right, so then we go ahead and test these. So test, and then we have x plus 1 over x minus 4. We don't need to come up with full numbers, we just need to figure out if this is positive or negative. So let's see, for our test points here we have negative 2. Okay, so this is x equals. Okay, so we're plugging into this function here. If I plug in negative 2 here, I'm getting a negative over a negative. Negative divided by a negative. Well, negative divided by a negative is positive. All right? Try x equals 0. Plugging that in here, I have 0 plus 1. Well, that's positive. 0 minus 4, that's negative. Positive divided by a negative is indeed negative. Okay, and finally, here we have x equals, let's see, uh, 5. Okay, plugging in, we get 5 plus 1, that's 6, that's positive. 5 minus 4, that's 1, that's still positive. And of course, positive divided by positive is positive. Okay, so there's that step. Uh, so let's see, that's step four and five.
Oh, it's almost five. We have to label our regions. So here, so, so to la label the region as true or false, we have to return to the original problem. Right? So we look at this. Um, this is less than or equal to zero, so when it's negative, which is less than or equal to zero, that's going to be true. Those are the ones we're looking for. If it's positive, which is greater than zero, that's going to be, in this problem, false. Another problem, like if this sign was a different direction, these would be switched. So you, you have to base this true and false part on each specific problem. Okay, so let's see. Negative gets a true, positive gets a false, so this is false true, false. Okay, and then the answer is true, so the answer is going to be the region containing x equals 0, so that is this region right in the middle here. Now, for the end point, something interesting happens here. Where, it's, where the numerator is equal to 0, where the top is equal to 0, we include that because it's, it's less than or equal to. So because of this equals to right here, we're going to include that endpoint because of the equal to. If this, was, if this was just less than here, we'd do a soft bracket here. But here's the thing. This automatically gets a soft bracket. That 4 came from the denominator, and putting a 4 into the denominator would force us to divide by 0. So anytime an endpoint comes from the denominator, it's never included in the answer. Never included in the answer. So no matter what, if it if it came from the denominator, it's going to get a soft bracket. Okay, so now we're ready for our answer here. Here's our final answer. All right, so it looks like we have negative 1 up to 4. And we're going to include negative 1, but we're not including the point 4. Let's try another one. Here we have x minus 1 over x plus 4 greater than or equal to 2. All right, so we're dealing with a rational inequality here, a nonlinear inequality. Step 1, make sure 0 is on one side of the inequality. Well, we don't have that, so we'll subtract 2 from both sides. This gives us x minus 1 over x plus 4 minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. There we go. Check. Step 2, if this is a rational equation, it is, combine over a single LCD. Ah, that's what we're missing here. So let's do that. And now I'm going to get an LCD here of x plus 4, a common denominator, so to speak. Least common denominator. x plus 4 over x plus 4. That will do it. So this becomes x minus 1 minus 2 x plus 4 all over x plus 4, greater than or equal to 0. Right, so you have to do all of this work to even get to the problem to get it started. Right, there's more. Look, we can simplify this numerator here. x minus 1 minus, I'm distributing this negative 2 here, so 2x minus 8 all over x plus 4, greater than or equal to 0, which finally gives us, um, looks like we have minus x minus 9 over x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And that does the trick for step 2. All right. Step 3, solve the related equation. And here we want to set both the numerator and the denominator equal to 0. Again, that'll get both, both our zeros, or our x-intercepts, and our asymptotes, both of which can be where the, this function can change from positive to negative. So we'll do the numerator here. We have negative x minus 9 equals 0. OK, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Negative x equals 9. So a few ways to proceed here. Let's just divide both sides by negative 1. That gives us x equals negative 9. So there's 1 and the denominator. x plus 4 equals 0. Subtract the 4 from both sides. x equals negative 4. OK. So this gives us our regions here. All right, so there we go. That was step three. And now separate the number line into regions defined in the previous step. OK, so we'll just zero somewhere up here. That's, that has nothing to do with the regions. It's just a marker, so we have something to orient by. So here's a region, negative 4. And here's another one at 
negative 9. All right, so then we get our test points. Let's do x equals, I don't know, negative 20. Why not? It can be any point in this range. Right, anything less than negative 9 will do the trick. We could pick negative 10, we could pick negative 20 billion. All right, in the middle here, let's do x equals negative 5. And my favorite point for these, x equals 0, because it's the easiest. OK, so there's that. Boom, test a point in each region. We already picked our test points. Now let's plug them in and label true or false. OK, so here's our test point. So we have x equals negative 20. These problems are kind of long, right? x equals negative 5 and x equals 0. I would say these are some of the longest or at least most involved problems in intermediate algebra. Okay, and what are we plugging into? Well, we're plugging into this equation here. This is what we are testing them in. So we're plugging into negative x minus 9 over x plus 4. Okay, so when I plug negative 20 in here, I get negative 20. So when I plug that into x here, that becomes positive 20 minus 9, which is positive on the top, divided by negative 20 plus 4 is negative. Positive divided by a negative is negative. Next, we test negative 5 by plugging into x. Plugging negative 5 in here, that makes it positive 5 minus 9 is negative. Negative 5 plus 4 is also negative. And negative divided by a negative is a positive. OK, and then 0, right? 0 minus 9 is negative. And 0 plus 4 is positive. But of course, negative divided by positive is negative. OK, now for our true falses here, we're dealing with greater than or equal to 0. Right, you could go up to the original, you could do it down here. Nothing has changed with this sign, so we'll just, I'll just do it down here. Um, so when it's positive, that's what's associated with greater than or equal to 0. That's going to be true, because that's what we want in this case. If we plugged in a point from, from the positive, any point that would, is positive down here in this test kind of table, that's going to give us a true result in our equation. So anything positive is true. Anything negative or less than is false. So that's how we break that down. And you have to, you have to give that a little thought for each problem. It's going to be different for each problem. Um, OK, so negative, false, positive, true, negative, false. So our regions are false, true, and false. Well, the true region is our answer, but we need to be careful with our endpoints here. Negative 9 came from the numerator. Since this is greater than or equal to, we're going to include that negative 9 in our answer because of the or equal to part. And then we cruise along, we're, we're doing this whole thing, and then we hit negative 4. Negative 4 came from the denominator. So no matter what, it can't be included in our answer, right? Because that's an asymptote, and asymptotes are never included. That would force us to divide by 0. We can't divide by 0. So there's our answer in graphical form. Whoops. So our answer in interval notation is simply, so we'll say answer it's hard to tell with all of this going on. We start at negative 9, we're including that, and then we go up to negative 4 and stop with soft bracket, meaning we're not including the point negative 4.